Dear students, today I am going to discuss the classic Keynesian theory of employment. The Keynesian theory of employment, it was developed by John Maynard Keynes, a British economist who, whose ideas since the theory and practice of macroeconomics and economic policies of government. He developed his theory in his book, The General Theory of Employment, Interest and Money, which was published in 1936. The Great Depression demolished the self-regulating nature of capitalist system. So there was Great Depression in 1930s in all over the world, which has originated in the United States. During that period, the capitalist self-regulating nature of capitalist system, that means the supply creates its own demand and there exists full employment and if there are any involuntary unemployment in the economy, that will be corrected through the flexible wage rate in the economy. But during the Great Depression, this thought, the economic thought of the classical writers failed to revive the situation of the classical capitalist work. Okay, so this theory, according to Keynes, the employment, level of employment, it is determined by the effective demand. So what is effective demand? And what is demand? Demand means it is the desire to get goods and services. And that desire, it will be effective when people can purchase goods and services. That means the effective demand has two components. One is desire and another one is willingness to purchase or buy. That means that they must have the purchasing capacity. So demand will be effective when people, they purchase goods and services. Okay. Next. Keynes used the term effective demand to denote the total demand for goods and services at different level of employment. So, at an entrepreneur or an, 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 a producer employ labor and by employing labor, there will be production in, the, in his plant or in the economy. And so, effective demand, it means the demand for goods and services at various level of employment. The effective demand is determined by aggregate demand function and aggregate supply function. So we will discuss this with diagram schedule. It will be clear to you. Again, another important definition is given by of effective demand it is given by Stoner and Hogg. According to them, effective demand is the aggregate demand price which becomes effective because it is equal to the aggregate supply price and thus represents a position of short-run equilibrium. It represents a position of short-run equilibrium. So if for demand to be effective, aggregate supply price must be equal to aggregate demand price. This theory is based on number of assumptions and these assumptions are the, there exists the economy is closed, it means it does not have any trade relation with any other country. And there is perfect competition in the market, homogeneity, perfect mobility, free entry and exist, and so on. Labor has money illusion, it means that a labor, he feels better when his wages double, even when the prices also double, denotes that his real wage is unchanged. To his real wage remain the same, real wage remains the same, but if his wages increases, money wages increases, at the same time the price of goods and services also increases in the same rate, then he feels better. Okay, the time period is short. The Clark Keynes theory, it is, it is short run theory. According to Keynes, in the long run, we will, we all die. So, 
practical problems are short run problems and we have to deal with the short run problems. So his theory is it is applicable in the short run. Another one is the law of diminishing return of wallets. The law of diminishing returns of wallets. Okay. So what does law of diminishing return return means? It means when you employ more and more workers in the production process, the total production will increase but at a diminishing rate. Okay. Now, what is aggregate demand function? Aggregate demand function, it is the different amount of money received which an entrepreneur expect to get from the sale of output at different level of employment. So, it is the expectation to get money by selling the output which are produced by the laborer. Labor, that means at different level of employment. So, this is the aggregate demand price schedule. It shows the different level of employment and different level of demands of price in the market. So, it has the two variables are positive. They are positively related. When employment is 10 lakhs, then aggregate demand price it is 2 100 crores when employment increases it will also increases and when employment is 35 lakhs aggregate demand price it is 450 crores. So this curve it has the aggregate demand price curve has positive slope. Again what is aggregate supply price function? The aggregate supply price refers to total amount of money that the organization in an economy should receive from the sale of output produced by employing a specific number of workers. Okay, it the uh, amount of money that should be or that must be received by the employer or by the producers by employing, by, by selling the output which are produced by different level of employment. Okay, which are by in order, in other words, it shows the functional relationship between the cost of production and services at a particular level of employment. Each level of employment involves certain money cost of production, including normal profits, which must be covered by the by selling the goods and services. So when the employer employed labor in the production process. There will be cost, they have to be paid, their remuneration, including the cost of production, there will be some normal profit. Those must be received in by, in the, by selling in the market. That aggregate supply price function reflects. Okay. Next. So, this is the aggregate supply price schedule. Here at the different level of employment, these are the supply price in the market. So, when employment increases, the supply price also increases. So, these are also positively related and if you get supply price also, the supply price curve also has positive slope. Okay. Next, let us discuss the determination of equilibrium level, equilibrium level of employment. So, equilibrium level of employment is determined by the equality between aggregate demand price and we get supply price. Here, along the O x axis, we measure the level of employment, and along the O y axis, we measure receipt and revenue and cost of production. Okay, so here you see at point E, both the demand curve and the supply curve intersects, and E is the effective demand point it is a effective demand point and this effective demand determines the level of employment that is o n in the market okay on the economy and if employment it is o n 1 that is it is less than o n so what will be in the market so there will be aggregate demand it will be 
more than immediate supply. That means expectation to receive the money by selling the commodity, it will be more than the cost of production. So entrepreneur, he will increase the employment to ON. So ON, it will be the equilibrium level of employment and at this equilibrium level of employment, the employers or the producers or entrepreneur, he will get maximum profit. Okay. Again, if employment is O and 2, then what will happen? The aggregate supply, it will be more than aggregate demand. That means cost will be more than expectation of receipt. Okay. So, here the employment will reduce. So, O N is the equilibrium level of employment, where, which is determined by the effective demand. Okay. Now, suppose we assume that O N it is not a the equilibrium level of employment O N is not an full employment employment full employment okay it is not a full employment equilibrium level of employment so we the economy to attain full employment what is needed. Either it has to increase aggregate demand function, uh, uh, it can be increased by increasing the effective demand. So, here this effective demand is a level of effective demand. So, in order to achieve it, increase the level of employment, effective demand has to be increased. So, effective demand has can be increased, it has two components, can be increased either by increasing the aggregate supply or by increasing the aggregate demand or both the combination. But according to Keynes, in the short run, what is given in the short run, supply, the aggregate, the supply cannot be increases. Okay. So, the effective demand can be increased by increasing the demand by increasing the expenditure on goods and services through consumption or through investment. If there is increase in the expenditure on goods and services through in consumption and investment, the aggregate demand curve it will shift from AD to AD1 and there will be this curve, AD1 curve, it will intersect the existing supply curve at point E1. So, E1 will be the effective demand, new equilibrium demand, effective demand and that will again determine the equilibrium employment that is NF which is full employment equilibrium. If, if again there is increase in aggregate, sub, aggregate demand for aggregate demand then there will be but equilibrium level of employment cannot be increased. There will be inflationary rise in the economy. There will be rise in the price level in the economy because supply of goods and services cannot be increased. All the resources will be exhausted. It will be fully utilized. So there will be no chance to increase the level of employment. And as a result, if there is a further increase in the expenditure, on by through consumption and investment by the people, then what will happen? There will be rise in inflation and rise in the price level. So, students, I think all of you have understood whatever we have discussed in this class. In the next class, we will discuss about the importance of effective demand as well as we will discuss the criticisms of the Ancient theory of employment. Thank you.